Welcome everyone. My name is Jody Kaplan and I'm Senior Director for UConn Alumni Relations and I'd like to welcome you to tonight's Welcome to the Neighborhood Fairfield County Program. This is a bit of a new twist on our annual event since we've had a pivot in the virtual world. So please bear with us on the technology front. I have the pleasure of being your host this evening and joining me from the alumni engagement team is Kristen Luger, our alumni engagement coordinator. Kristen will be in the background handling all of our pr production aspects tonight. Good luck to you, Kristen. Tonight, we're excited to bring you a panel of Fairfield County experts, people who have done what you're hoping to do, or you may have already done, and people who can speak to some of the most crucial information you need to know about Fairfield County, from apartment hunting to best bars, to traffic patterns on 95, and public transit tips and tricks, we're hoping to cover a little bit about a lot tonight. So let me get to a little bit of the housekeeping right now. For those of you who took advantage of our address and information updating deadline during registration, your lanyards will be mailed out at the end of the month. So they will get to your door. Next, all of you right now are muted. We know that you'll have questions throughout the program so feel free to throw those in the question and answer box on your toolbar. We'll do our best to get to them throughout the program. Additionally, feel free to use the chat function to engage in some dialogue with others here tonight. Lastly, we realize this is hard to impossible to meet people in this environment. So we've included a post panel happy hour and social opportunity in a Zoom meeting format. So at the conclusion of this presentation, head over to the happy hour via the link that is posted right now in the chat box. We'd like to use the time during the happy hour for you to ask more questions and meet some of the other alums in the area. Don't forget, once you get into the happy hour, turn on your camera, grab a beverage, and enjoy the happy hour portion. So just make sure that you copy the link that's located in the chat box and enter it into your browser. The link is also found at the bottom of all your reminder emails that you re received from us this week. I think you're actually even going to get an email in the middle of this presentation with the happy hour link again. We can't be too careful. And to entice you more about the happy hour, by registering for the event, you've been entered into a drawing to receive a fabulous UConn baseball cap. Brand new, hot off the presses. And we're going to pick the winners at the happy hour, but you have to be present to win. Now, on to what tonight's all about. Joining us tonight are some of the best and brightest Huskies in the Fairfield County. On behalf of the Alumni Relations Office, I want to thank each of them for taking time out of their busy schedules to join us and help you gain a better understanding of what it truly is like living in Fairfield County. Moderating the panel for us tonight is Harold Derrick, a longtime UConn volunteer. I leave you all in very good hands. Now, I'm gonna turn the show over to you, Harold. Go for it. Thank you and good evening. I've never been called the best and brightest by Jody in my entire life. So this is an amazing night and I'm glad it's being recorded. Okay, folks, we're gonna to try to you know, go through some questions that we've put together and some that you've sent to us. And we're gonna to try to do that in about 45 to 60 minutes. Uh, and again, leaving somewhere the rest of it up to 90 minutes uh, to do the happy hour so that again, we could have a little more uh, informal socializing. But I have uh, five great, uh, four great panelists along with me that uh, we're all going to uh, introduce ourselves and then go through, through some of these questions. So I'm going to start by introducing myself. Again, my name is Harold Derrick. I'm from the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. I was a math actuarial science major way back in the year 1982. Yes, UConn was around back in 1982. And right now I'm a retired actuary uh, and a retired high school math teacher. Uh, I currently live in Shelton, Connecticut. I've been there for 24 years. I, I grew up in Shelton and I relocated back to Shelton uh, after I had a job change in my corporate uh, life when I was, uh, went from Hartford to New York City. So. Uh, I've been around this area for most of my life. Okay, so there's my 60 second spiel. I'm gonna turn it over to Richard. Please introduce yourself and we'll go, from, go around and go from there. Thanks, Harold. Uh, my name is Richard Suarez. I uh, graduated uh, undergrad in 1997 at the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences with uh, a degree in molecular and cell biology. 
Um, I then went back uh, for my MBA at UConn at the Stanford campus and graduated in 2004 with a concentration, with an MBA with a concentration in finance. Um, and I'm currently a senior relationship manager at Charles Schwab. I work in Manhattan. Well, like most people right now, I'm actually working from home, but uh, I work at uh, one of the Schwab offices in Midtown Manhattan. Thank you, Brian. All right, my name is Brian Kirby. I am a 2018-2019 grad of the Yukon Neag School of Education. I studied secondary education for biology, um, as well as giftedness, creativity, and talent development. Um, this is my second year living in New Canaan. Um, I moved here because I got a job as a gifted education teacher in Norwalk, Connecticut. Um, so we started school this week, so it's been quite a week. Um, I'm actually surprised I'm still awake and here to be able to do this with you all tonight. Um, but I'm super excited and love UConn, so any time I get to spend with more UConn alums is a great day. Thank you. Oh, uh, here, sorry, I forgot, I forgot to... I think a little other stuff about what town I live in. I can go at the end or I can just- No, go ahead, Richard, where do you I, live? I, I completely forgot that part. I thought we were just going over what year we graduated. No, I live in, uh, in Norwalk. I've been living in Norwalk for about 15 years now. So I grew up in Connecticut. Um, my first job out of college was in Stanford, Connecticut, and I worked there for a few years. And then I uh, found a job in New York City and was commuting in there. And after a few years of that, uh, I made a decision that I was not going to move and live in New York City, but would just continue to commute. And I decided uh, to purchase uh, a place here in Connecticut and, and, and just been here. So uh, anyone has any questions later on about Norwalk and Sono, I've been here for a long time. Thank you. Perfect. Is that, now you got it all there, Richard? We're done? <laughs> I, I do. Okay. It's my first Tiffany. time to do it, you know. <laughs> Thank you. Tiffany, go ahead. Uh, my name is Tiffany Tu. I graduated from College of Liberal Arts and Sciences um, with a degree in also actual science. Um, I am part of the class of 2015. I currently work for a small consulting firm in Stanford. Um, we do 401 consulting. Um, I have been in Stanford my entire life, uh, minus the four years that I went to UConn stores. And then I recently moved to New Canaan right before the pandemic started. Thank you very much, Tiffany. Okay, Mike, you're last up, go. Yeah, hey everybody, uh, Mike Tamburino. Um, I went to the School of Business. I got my uh, degree in marketing way back in 1979. I'm actually older than Harold, that's hard to believe, I know. Um, I got that at stores and then I came back um, to Stanford where I live now and I've lived since the age of seven. I got my, um, uh, my master's in finance in 1988. That was then we called it the Stanford branch. Of course, today that word is, uh, is a no-no. Of course, we call it a campus. And um, my first career was in credit analysis. I worked for a division of mobile chemical. And uh, for about the last 20 years though, I've worked in uh, software sales. I'm currently with an Australian company. We provide um, business communication services. And thankfully, I'm able to work at home. Great to be here. Back to you, Harold. Thank you. Okay, so I think hopefully folks could see we got Norwalk, Stanford, New Canaan, and Upper Fairfield County, Shelton covered. So we kind of know a little bit about the area and we've been around for, for quite some time. So we're gonna go over some questions. And again, as uh, Jody said a little bit early on, if you do have any questions, please throw them in the chat room and we'll try to see if we could uh, answer them as we go along. But question number one, what neighborhood or area of the city do you live in? Uh, we talked about how long you live there, but why did you end up selecting that neighborhood or area? And I'm gonna start this off. Remember, you also might wanna throw out there uh, how you see your town maybe differing from uh, some of the other towns that we talked about or some of the other towns in the Fairfield County area because uh, that was a question that came up uh, when we got some emails from you folks. So Brian, I'm gonna start off with you. Can you? Uh, Tell us about your two years in New Canaan. Yeah, so um, like I said, I chose New Canaan, or well, this area mainly because of the job I worked at. Um, so gifted education teachers are quite rare in Connecticut. Um, so I was very fortunate enough to find one in Norwalk. Um, and I found my apartment that I currently live in through a family friend of mine. Um, I usually need a chalkboard to explain the connection between me and the, the landlord of the apartment. 
But um, one thing I do really like about the area is the proximity, not only to New York, um, but also the, the level of restaurants and bars and other um, fun activities to do in the area. So New Canaan is quite a small town. Um, New Canaan Center is just a walk down from my apartment right now. And it's got a lot of uh, really cute small stores. So there's a, um, like a J. Crew down there. There's a Starbucks, a really cute bookstore called M Street Books, and a bunch of really great restaurants. Um, Spiga and Elm and um, Pesca and a ton of great little places. So for me, that's kind of one of the big key things is the, the, the restaurant life and the shop life and all that. Um, and I'm sure Rich will talk about Norwalk and Sono um, as well, but even just the proximity to Stanford uh, has a ton of great places um, and Fairfield and Greenwich. Um, so you really are getting a really good food scene down here. Um, as well as a bunch of great re uh, shops and um, places to go, um, which is a little different in a global pandemic, but they're still open and a lot of lot of outdoor seating um, adequately spaced. So it is kind of it is feeling safe in the area because um, if it if it didn't feel safe, I wouldn't go out to eat. Um, have you noticed Have you noticed anything that's been shut down that was normally open from before, or are you it just it's just different. It's just different because a lot, I know, especially in New Canaan, um, a lot of the sidewalks are closed because they put a lot of outdoor seating on there. Um, so not a lot of people are eating indoors down here still, um, which is probably a good idea. And it's actually made for some really nice seating areas outside. So I guess the town relieved the outdoor seating kind of policy and let them shut down the sidewalks, kind of cut down some of the parking. Um, so now parking is free in New Canaan and the parking lot that's usually paid and you can because they cut down on a lot of the spots that are normally free um, to alleviate the sidewalk traffic. Um, so that is, it was kind of a nice thing that they did. Great. Richard, you talked a little bit about Norwalk. Uh, how did you, what neighborhood are you in, in Norwalk? And uh, you know, what are the key features? Of why do you like living there? Yeah, sure. So I, I used to live in Stanford. I was actually, this is over 15 years ago. I was in downtown, a stumble away from all the bars. Um, and at that time, I was deciding to actually purchase a place. And so I was looking for a place that had its own garage because I had no desire to, to shovel my car in the winter. So I was commuting into the city. I just wanted to get in my car and drive to the, you know, to the train station. So I chose Norwalk. And, you know, I've known Norwalk for a while, even living in Stanford and going out in Stanford. I would occasionally go out in Sono. Uh, Sono stands for South Norwalk. It's the historical part of, um, of Norwalk, has a lot of bars and restaurants. It's an extremely popular place. It's a, a big hangout for all different types of people and demographics and it's an age range because there's high-end restaurants, there's your dive sports bar, um, like the Blind Rhino, one of the, the owners there is actually a UConn alum. So and they have you know great stuff to just hang out kind of like your local neighborhood watering hole. And then, like I said, there's like steakhouses and things like that. But I, I chose, I chose Norwalk as I was looking uh, for that particular uh, reason. Uh, I live near the Waypoint area. Waypoint's a new area. So I've, I've been here in 15 years, but they've got there's a new development here in Norwalk uh, that's called Waypoint or the block at Waypoint. And there's a lot of new restaurants like Sedona Tap House, Colony Pizza. Some of you might, might guys may be familiar been in, in Stanford for the longest time and then they had other places in Fairfield that they opened in a few other places and they opened one here in Norwalk. Uh, there's Barcelona restaurant that used to be in Sono moved over to the Waypoint area and not very far from the Waypoint is that is the new uh, the new mall that they built here it's called the Sono collection. So it, it's been great. I mean Norwalk is, is a great place to live if you even like to do outdoor activities you know they've got a great uh, great parks for activities and mountain biking, Cranberry Park, it's great, great mountain biking. Uh, if you like to go to the beach, there's Calf Pastor Beach. If you're a resident and you pay taxes, it's a free beach pass to get you in. Um, and not far from Calf Pastor Beach on the other side is the Norwalk Cove Marina. Uh, there's Sunset Grill there. It's got great outdoor seating right by the boat slips. Uh, closer to Sono, right around the corner from the Main Street in Sono, there's Sono Seaport Seafood, great outdoor deck, also looking out 
uh, in, into the in, into sound. So there's quite a bit of stuff to do around here. So if anyone is thinking about moving to Norwalk, I'm more than happy to uh, to talk to you guys. I'm going to kind of emphasize what Rich was saying there. I, I love South Norwalk. It's one of my favorite places. My The gym I go to there, um, anytime I'm like, oh, let me go out to eat, I always kind of go to South Norwalk um, with friends. It's got a lot of great places in it. And the mall's, yeah. it, mall's kind of dangerous for me because I can spend a lot in there um, with H&M <laughs> and Bloom, Bloom, or Bloomingdale's, and it's got a lot of great places in there. Yeah. The thing, great thing about Sono, just one more thing, it's mainly one one road. So if you decide to have dinner and then you want to go to a different type of bar, depending on what you're looking for, like live music, you don't have to, you know, get in your car or anything else. You can just kind of literally walk a few, a, a few doors down and be at a different type of bar or whatever. So it's just, it's really easy and convenient from that perspective, the South Norwalk. So it's a very popular place and there's plenty of parking there with garages or off street parking. So it's a pretty popular place, a big summer hangout. Okay, thanks. You know, we talked to a little bit about our background and what we did. We, we're kind of hoping that we could learn something from the attendees about themselves. Uh, so we're going to have a pop-up poll of two very quick questions that we're, uh, we're going to throw, throw out at you. The first question I think you could see is, are you living in this area? And if you uh, attendees could, park, uh, could put in either a yes or a no, it'll take two seconds to uh, answer that question. Click on your yes or click on your no, and then we'll give you the results. And the second question is, are you, you know, there we go. We have 80% uh, of the people are living in the area, so 20% uh, are not. So hopefully we've helped uh, the 20% out a little bit more and the, the folks that are living here are learning a little bit about something they might not have known. The second question is, are you in the class of 2020? Want to see how many of you folks are, have just graduated? The first uh, pandemic graduates of the University of Connecticut. And the results are no, none of you are new graduates. Okay, so we're doing a little uh, networking to uh, see if some of you want to switch uh, your careers somewhere in the Fairfield County area. So I'm, I'm kind of a little surprised about that. I thought we might get a few new graduates here. Okay, let's continue down our list of questions. Uh, what advice would you give a newcomer for apartment house hunting and uh, the best way to have a roommate hunt? And we are really lucky. Brian right now is actually looking for a new place to live. And uh, he could talk to you a little bit about uh, pre-COVID versus post-COVID uh, trying to find uh, a new house. Go, Brian. Yeah. So, um one of the downsides of New Canaan is the cell service. Um, so I don't have cell service in my apartment. Um, and so that's kind of one of the main reasons I'm, I'm looking, um, especially with all the storms we've been having. Um, and I think I'm kind of ready to kind of move to uh, a different area as well, but still within the um, Fairfield County. So I started by just doing some casual searches on apartments.com and a bunch of different websites to try to find things as well as you know, being in the area for a bit, I have driven past a couple apartments. I'm like, oh, those are nice to live in. So the weird thing with COVID um, and apartment hunting is kind of the tours. Some apartment complexes aren't doing tours in person. Um, so it is a little difficult to kind of see an apartment um, that way, but it, it works kind of. Um, others are letting you in, obviously, with proper uh, protection, you know, masks and, and whatnot. Um, so you do get to kind of see apartments in the area. Um, the ones that I've kind of stumbled upon so far, uh, specifically in South Norwalk, um, you're looking at around 17 to 2,000 a month if you're talking one bedroom or studio um without a roommate if you are looking for a roommate then that'll get you down a little cheaper because it'll be a, a split probably around 2500 to 2000 split um again for the south norwalk area um stanford is a little bit cheaper depending on where you go in the area um the closer you are to bedford street um and uh kind of the water the more expensive it'll get because that's kind of where the nightlife is 
Um, and then the farther away you get from there, the cheaper you get. Um, I found a couple apartments that were eight, 900 a month um, from that were kind of far away. And then the closer I got, I was lo looking back at like 15 to 17. Um, for the roommate hunt, um, I currently don't have a roommate. Um, I wasn't particularly looking for one as well for the new area, but I know a bunch of my friends who have moved to this area recently found roommates online um, through different roommate hunting websites, um, through Facebook. One of my friends actually found one through Buy or Sell, which those of you who have been um, graduated recently know it's a Facebook group um, that is promote, like predominantly UConn students um, selling textbooks, posting about events on campus, um, and has a large alumni population. I think there's uh, quite a few members in there. So people post in there as well, looking for roommates. Um, and as I believe Rich will talk about later, there is a Facebook group predominantly for Fairfield County alums. Um, so that is something you can also post in to find a, a roommate if you're looking for um, kind of a vetted Yukon person. Um, you can use that as well. So it's been kind of a, an interesting run looking for an apartment now. I haven't quite found anything I like yet. Um, that's within my price range, but like every apartment search, whether global pandemic or not, it takes time. Um, I have a, a friend who's a realtor who's also kind of keeping an eye out for me um, for places. So if you know anyone that's a realtor, or if you um, have like a, you can Google and find a realtor, they might be able to find you some apartments too that come across their desk because they get things before they're posted. Um, so that's kind of a good tidbit of advice um, that I was given the other day that I'm now cashing in on. Um, so yeah, it's definitely interesting looking for an apartment in a global pandemic. Okay, thank you. And again, I'm gonna remind folks, you know, throw your, any questions you have in the chat room, we'll uh, try to, you know, get those out to our panelists. Let's uh, stick a little bit more with, um, around town stuff. How do we get around town? Do we get around town by car? Do we get around town by bike? Do we get around town by public transportation, Uber, Lyft, scooters? Mike, you're a Stanford expert. Why don't you talk to us a little bit about Stanford? Yeah, let me tell you about Stanford. I I've lived here a long time and the infrastructure was built about when I moved here back in the 60s. And uh, the population is, has quadrupled since then. So naturally that lends to traffic. It is a car culture. Um, I will answer the question about traffic differently than I would have about seven or eight months ago because traffic has really uh, diminished with COVID. It seems like people are either not working um, or they're working from home more. But there's a lot of traffic around the downtown area, maybe a couple of blocks north or south of, um, of I-95 on either direction. Um, getting out of Stanford, if you, if you live in Stanford but you work out of town, heading northbound, you will hit no traffic in either direction. If you go southbound into Westchester, you'll hit some traffic because they're doing a major um, exit upgrade near 287. So that really backs up. You're gonna hit that probably in both directions. Um, you really do need a car though if you're gonna be in town. It's not a bicycle town. They built some bicycle paths. Um, I'm a lifelong cyclist. I don't think they did a good job. I don't think they're safe. Um, I wouldn't recommend a bicycle for getting around town. Uh, public transportation, it's okay. I mean, there's a couple of bus lines that, again, kind of go east-west from, from one side of town to the other. There's not too much in the northern part of town in terms of um, public transportation. Traffic's not too bad up there. I mean, really, when you get into North Stanford, um, it's almost like being in the country. So the majority of the traffic is going to be in, um, is gonna be in, the, in the downtown area. Richard, tell us a little bit about Norwalk in terms of car, bike, public transportation, Uber, et cetera, go. Sure, so from a convenience perspective, yeah, car is much more convenient, especially if you want to do a multitude of things. For example, I like to play golf, so it's much easier for me to get to the golf course, which is a, a, a beautiful public golf course here in Norwalk called Oak Hills Park. Uh, they also have a tennis club there. Um, it's a public course. It's not like it's a, it's a private course like that. If you are uh, a Norwalk resident, you can, you can purchase a Norwalk uh, resident pass, to make it cheaper. But to go with that, I, I think the car is much more convenient. If, you know, for a little bit of time, you don't have a car and you can use the bus. I think it's called Norwalk Wheels. It does travel to various places. Uh, primarily has plenty of stops along Route 1. You'll notice when you move to Norwalk, 
probably, maybe, I don't know about as much as Stanford, but in Norwalk, Route 1 or the Post Road is where we have a lot of different type of, uh, of stores, whether from grocery shopping, from Stop and Shop, ShopRite, um, <clears throat> there'll be stuff like Best Buy and um, TJ Maxx or Marshalls and things like that. And you keep going on, there's a Dick's Sporting Goods, Golf Galaxy. It's just one busy, busy road with like tons of lights. So if you're in the car, be prepared to stop every two minutes for a red light. You'll be, you'll be stuck on the post road. But you know, there's a Home Depot there as well. So car is much more convenient. Uh, bike people do bike. Uh, like I said, and mentioned public transportation. There's plenty of Uber and Lyft, especially on the weekends. If you're going out to the bars and restaurants, planning to have a few cocktails, um, I would suggest just calling Uber or Lyft. It's just safe when you're uh, when you're having a few cocktails, not to, to to be driving around. So there's there's plenty of Uber and, and Lyft service here. Thanks. Okay. Uh, based on where you live, how accessible are things? That, and uh, we just got a little bit of information from uh, from Richard. But things like grocery stores, restaurants, and bars, cultural touch points like uh, museums, music venues, sports venues, and beaches. Tiffany. You've been quiet, so let's let's throw this one out to you. You can tell us a little bit about New Canaan, and I believe uh, it's Stanford and New Canaan, right? You know, I can talk about both. About both. Um, I think one of the best things about living in Lower Fairfield County is just how accessible things actually are. Um, so in New Canaan, there are I think two grocery stores that you can go to. Um, both are probably five minutes driving from me. Um, when I lived in Stanford, I lived across from Trader Joe's, which was kind of dangerous because I would. I'm, I'm just a walk away. So if I needed something, I would just walk over, grab it and go, but also pick up 10 other things that I didn't need. Um, along with grocery stores, there's a bunch of restaurants and bars in this area. I think no matter what town you go in, you're bound to run into a really good um, restaurant. So New Canaan, some of my favorites are Joe's Pizza um, and Locali. In Stanford, um, for a quick bite, I like going to Atlantic Street Pizza. Um, what else? Finn for sushi. There's so many restaurants down there. Um, museums here, I would say, I don't really go to the museums. I'd say one thing I did go there recently <laughs> is the Maritime Aquarium, which was like a few years ago. I went with my friends from high school and I think we had more fun than the five-year-olds that were there um, with us. Um, what else? Sports? Is there any sports venues down in your area? Or just like ball, just like uh, I guess play, play softball and baseball? <laughs> yeah, like there's sports nearby. If we're doing like major sports. Uh, Yankee Stadium's a train ride away. I don't really watch sports. I don't know about you, Brian. <laughs> but maybe we can try and help stay from it later. Brian, um, you want to add something? Um, I, I, a Maritime Aquarium, I took my kids on a field trip there um last year and i also kind of agree with Stephanie that it was actually more i think i had more fun than they did yeah like <laughs> you get to touch the jellyfish and then you get to fall into this hole to be with the meerkats it's it's pretty amazing now what um, about the beaches um, in your area i most towns here along the coast you're gonna have a beach um within town you'll just have to check in on the um restrictions and how to get a parking pass uh, so I know Stanford, you have to be a resident and you have to get a beach pass through the government center. Norwalk, as long as you pay taxes, you pretty much have a beach pass. Uh, New Canaan does not have a beach, but they do have a pool and a man-made beach, I guess. It's called Kiwanis Park. Um, so that's an option. But if you do want to go to the beach and don't want to get a sticker, um, you can take a drive to Short Island in Westport, that's a public beach. And then also Silver Sands up in Milford, that's also public. Now, and before I get to Brian to talk a little bit about his town, I, Stanford also has a pretty good arts area in terms of music. Uh, isn't there the Stanford uh, Palace Theater and some of those things that are right uh, in downtown Stanford? Yep, there's the Palace Theater. Um, there's an Avon movie theater, which is mostly um, small independent films that film uh, that show there. Uh, you can go to the Maury show, Jerry Springer, Steve Wilkos, they're down there too. Um, typically, if this was, if we weren't in a pandemic, uh, every Thursday there would be live concerts in downtown Stanford called Alive at Five. 
uh, which are really fun. You just go there with your friends after work, grab a few drinks, just enjoy the music. But unfortunately, well, we got a question in the chat room, and it is for Stanford. So, I, Tiffany, I'm going to throw it to you, and yeah. uh, could also throw it to Mike if he wants it. What are the most COVID-19 friendly places to shop for food and eat out, and what are good local fresh food 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 places that support the local food places? Um, grocery shopping for me from the get go. I've just been going to Trader Joe's. They're very safe with it. They count who's in and out, um, they sanitize the parts for you, and they also, uh, you're, you're at every other register, so you're not close to people either. As far as eating out, um, I think a lot of people are still doing curbside or takeout. Um, there is what, there, I have seen restaurants introduce takeout, so if you're in Stanford, definitely recommend Cafe Silvium, because they did not do takeout before until now. Um, and then if you are looking for something organic for groceries, there's also Mike's Organic in the south end of Stanford. Um, they actually do deliver. So if you don't want to go out and grocery shop yourself, you can just order through their website. And we just got a yep. shout out from a, a farmer's markets around the area, Southport, et cetera. Mike, you have any uh, places you've gone out to eat uh, and socially distanced in Stanford? I mean, I think they're all doing a pretty good job. I mean, I have to be, happen to be a pizza lover. Stanford has always been known for great pizza. There have to be a dozen, 15 great pizza places. I think Rich mentioned Colony Pizza. He mentioned the one in Norwalk. We have one in Stanford. Um, I mean, there's just, I think if you just, if you just Google Pizza Stanford, you'd probably come up with, as I said, 12 or 15 locations. They're all doing a great job of, uh, of keeping people socially distanced. As far as buying food, I, I wanted to just mention ShopRite and Stop and Shop. I think we have um, four shop rights and two stop and shops in town. And they're doing a great job. I like both of them. I think they're both uh, quality operations. Okay. Brian, let's go back to you with the same question uh, for New Canaan. Grocery stores, restaurants and bars, beaches, cultural things. Let's, I mean, we talked a little bit about some of that stuff. So yeah, try to hit some of the stuff you might not have hit before in terms of music venues or sports venues, et cetera. Yep. Um, so one of my favorite places to go out is um, for drinks is Uncorked in New Canaan um, and kind of going along with um, one of our questions from the chat. They, I went there the other day with some people after work and they were taking temperatures at the door uh, and by door, I mean kind of, I guess, outside area, all outside seating. Um, so they were taking temperatures and the tables are spread far apart. Um, so it was, it was definitely a, a safe environment. Um, and then also in Stanford, I went to the beer garden, um, which also very socially distant. Um, you ordered on your phone and then you picked it up um, at the bar. So you never kind of waited in line at the bar for, your, for any drinks or food. Um, you kind of ordered it on the Toast app. Um, like Tiffany was saying, there's not many sports venues that I know of in the area. Um, Pre-pandemic, anytime I went to a sporting event, it was either um, in Bridgeport, I went to the UConn hockey game down there for, um, and then I went to Brewport before that. So Brewport is a great pizza place down there, um, just a, a, a few minutes away from Harbor Yard. Um, so that's if you're looking kind of in the Bridgeport area, which is about, I think, 20, 25 minutes from Stanford and Nor New Canaan and Norwalk. Um, and then kind of going the other way, you're talking, you know, Yankee Stadium and um, the rest of the New York sports teams are kind of a train rider way in the other direction. Um, I'm glad you brought up Bridgeport. Oh, UConn, as UConn Fairfield County chapter has done a lot with Webster Bank Arena. Uh, I know that we, Rich and Mike and I have worked on uh, some of the UConn hockey games as well as the Bridgeport Sound Tigers games. And at one point the UConn men's and women's basketball teams had a game uh, at Webster Bank Arena. We always cross our fingers and hope when the schedule comes out, uh, we'll get another one down there. And we had some UConn events uh, around that through the, the Fairfield County chapter. So there's, and there's also some musical places, um, places for concerts. Fairfield uh, has uh, a place right by the Fairfield train station that uh, has fairly popular bands, but it's, it's a small uh, 200, 300 seat arena. Uh, I wouldn't even call it arena. It's just a, a, a nice, to, nice place to hear some music. 
Uh, obviously, so obviously Webster Bank has some concerts every once in a while. And they're, they've built a brand new amphitheater in Bridgeport, which has not opened yet. It was supposed to open in the spring, but either uh, something to do with uh, construction or COVID kind of pushed it off. And I think they're now scheduling it for next spring, but uh, it's supposed to be an outdoor place to, to hear music. I, I had concert tickets to Steve Miller and those things got blown away like everyone else's concerts got blown away. So Harold, that's that, so Bridgeport has some stuff. Brian, sorry. That's the old Bluefish Stadium, right? Correct. That's you know, right. Bluefish used to play there and uh, they unfortunately could not uh, keep crowds. So they kind of knocked that down and made it the amphitheater. And that's right by the Bridgeport train station. So if you have a problem driving, you could always take the train from either, either Stanford or Norwalk or New Canaan. Uh, and especially right there in Bridgeport, you're, you're getting off and it's a, it's, a, it's a walk to Webster Bank Arena for, from the train. Um, Kayla also was mentioning about theater. Um, I know theater pretty well in the area because um, that's kind of more, less sports, more theater for me. Um, there's a lot of great theater companies in the area as well. New Canaan used to do summer theater under a tent every, every year. Um, they didn't this year because of COVID, but if you ever are into summer theater, you want to see a show under a tent. Um, New Canaan's a great area for that. There's the Ridgefield Playhouse, which has um, theater kind of shows and concerts. So like Cheetah Rivera has performed there and a bunch of other famous Broadway stars. Um, Westport Playhouse is another great one. Um, and even just the high schools in the area, um, Staples has a really, really good high school production. I saw Curtains there, I think two years ago. Um, and it was, a, it kind of blew me away how great they were. Um, so even if you're you're not into kind of the, the large scale theater, kind of the Broadway stars coming here, or the local plays, the, the high school ones are worth it. Um, seeing Ridgefields and Westports, um, St. Luke's and New Canaan, it's a private school, have a, has a great, great theater group. Um, so there are a lot of great theater companies. Um, there's a bunch in Fairfield too. Um, I know uh, an alum from my high school, Connor Dean, runs one in Fairfield for younger kids um, as well. So if you have kids, that's a great one to go to. Um, I forget the name of it. I can get the name um, before the end of the panel or during the happy hour if anybody's interested. Um, yeah. By the way, I, I, and the attendees, unless you're taking fast and furious notes, we're going through a lot of different things. We're, we're saying a lot. We're, we're coming up with a bunch of different ideas. If you haven't noticed, we are recording this session and this session is going to be posted uh, on a Yukon website, which Jody could tell us uh, a little bit more about uh, towards the end of our presentation. So if you want to see us all again and go through this whole thing one more time, or fast forward to the parts you want to see to find out what's important in New Canaan or Stanford or Norwalk. It's uh, it'll be very easy for you to do that, and you and you don't have to continue to take notes. Okay, with respect to what we've been talking about, um, are there any apps or social media that you folks use to keep up to date as to what's happening in and around the city and what's trending? And Tiffany, I'm going to throw this one out to you. Go. Well, first off, the most important one is um, the Facebook group. So if you're not part of it already, there's a Yukon Fairfield County Alumni Network um, page on Facebook that you can go like. I think Rich is one of the admins for it. Um, and most recently, we have published a little cheat sheet um, slash survival guide of links to certain cities um, and guides that might help you get around in the area. So it might be some recreational sports, um, websites to the local government and how to get a beach pass, stuff like that. Um, it was posted on August 27th, if you want to scroll, or there's another tab under files that you can easily access it from. Um, and then in addition to that, there's a bunch of other resources that you can find online. I found that um, Instagram has been a really big key in keeping up to date with what's new in the area, what's happening in events. Um, for Stanford particularly, there is um, a site called heystanford.com, who's also on Instagram, that hosts a lot of events in the area, and also um, reshares a lot of events that are happening soon. Uh, CT Bites is another website that's good for finding good restaurants in the Fairfield County area. Um, so. There's a, an app called Nexter, if you are a resident of the Fairfield County area. Um, they're usually, I think actually this is a nation app, 
but you can get connected to your neighborhood. So say there's a tree down on the road that you usually take home. Someone might post, hey, there's a tree down here. Avoid this route if possible. So it gives you a chance to connect with your neighbors. Um, and if you say you need like a cup of sugar because you're baking, but you don't have it, you can post there and maybe someone in your neighborhood will, say, will tell you to go on by and grab a cup of sugar, stuff like that. Um, I think also Reddit is a good source. Um, if anybody is on Reddit, there are lots of subs for the cities in this area. I know Stanford has one. I believe Norwalk has one, um, but I'm not sure about the other Fairfield County uh, cities. Perfect. Okay, if you're looking at the chat, you can see that uh, there's a link to the Facebook group uh, that was posted out there. I'd strongly suggest you click on that and you sign up for it. Rich is, does a bang up job uh, as an administrator. He puts on a lot of great UConn information. Uh, and again, there's times when people might want to network and find out some information about uh, jobs in the area, et cetera. And uh, it's a good place to, to, to make that happen. Question about a commute to New York City, Metro North. Uh, it's a new question. I know, Rich, you currently go into New York City every day. Well, you used to pre-COVID. What right. can you tell us about the trains? Sure. Yeah, the trains, you know, the trains are okay. You know, they, they, they run. They get us there. You know, they're not the fancy bullet trains like you have in Tokyo, Japan, or anything like that. But, but they do. They do a great job. So Stanford is a major hub. So most of the trains do stop in Stanford. So uh, South Norwalk also has a main train station, which the majority of trains stop there. And then I do know that like uh, Fairfield definitely has two train stations and then Bridgeport's also another, uh, another uh, main uh, train stop there. It, it, they're convenient to get to, you know, in and out of the city. I, I don't want to drive in and out of the city, traffic, tolls and whatever. So, so I do it. I get a, a monthly pass, uh, unlimited. Uh, so even if on the weekends I want to go into the city, I do that. So it's convenient. It's good. And, I think someone uh, else here had asked a question. Go ahead. I was going to say you haven't you haven't really been on the train since COVID, have you? I have not. No. Yeah. No. The, co the company I work for decided to have uh, folks work from home, so I have not been in the city in quite some time. Okay. Anyone else doing public no. transportation since COVID? Buses? Anything like that? Anyone have any any experience with that? What's going What's going on? I'll just throw in real quickly, Harold, that uh, as I drive by the Stanford train stations, Springdale, Glenbrook, um, the parking lots are pretty sparse, so you won't have a problem getting a seat on the train these days, that's for sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, what are some good ways to continue being a part of the UConn alumni community? in addition to social media, uh, any alumni networking tips, connecting with other students who are moving to the same area? Um, Brian, we'll start off with you. What do you, what, what, how are you keeping in track with, uh, with your fellow UConn alum? Uh, so one of my favorite uh, things that I've done so far since I've moved here was last year, there was a, a, a UConn alumni event actually at Sign of the Whale in Stanford, which is a rooftop bar um, and I think we got there, I think the event was in the afternoon, we got there around 3, 3.30, um, and we ended up staying till like one in the morning. Um, it was, it, obviously you kind of ended at around like five or 5.30, but it was just kind of, I, you know, we met up with a bunch of alums who were there, we met new friends um, who me and my friends are still friends with now. Um, so it was just a really, really fun event um, that UConn offered. And once kind of things start to return to normal a little bit, uh, I'm sure they'll be offering many more um, kind of in-person events in the area. And so I, I would highly recommend taking uh, advantage of those. Um, so that was kind of my big thing. And I, you know, UConn alumni always has great events going on at either local breweries. I was actually planning to go to one, um, I believe it was in Stanford in the spring, which got canceled. Um, so they- how'd you, how, how did you find out about these events? You, the the uh, UConn alumni website. Um, so that has a list of all of the events going on. There's kind of a, like a nice streamlined calendar. And once you go to one, there's usually marketing for the other events that were there. So the way I found out about the breweries was when I went to the homecoming tailgate through UConn alumni. They had the list of all the breweries they were going to. So I was planning to go to the one in the spring. Um, and then I found out through the emails and the website about the Sign of the Whale event. 
Yeah, so folks, you, you should be getting emails. You should, if you haven't started getting emails, you should be getting a bunch of emails about different events and try not to delete them. Try to look at them first before you, you, you delete what you think might be junk mail because there's a lot of good stuff on there because you said, as you said, you had, a, you had a really good event with that. Richard, you uh, have been involved with uh, Fairfield County for quite some time. What's, uh, what are some good ways of being uh, involved with the Yukon community? Uh, I absolutely think just attending some of the Yukon alumni relations events. Uh, I think Brian mentioned Sign of the Whale. I'd, I'd gone there uh, to that. It's a great opportunity to meet other alums in the area. The old event, it's just really laid back and it's a great way to do that. Uh, also, you know, there's the Husky Hub. So if you, if you go to the Facebook page, uh, this group here created a, a quick survival guide and we'll continue to update that guide. But that's another, another place of uh, folks from the university, such as Jody and other folks also post events to the Facebook page as, as an event. So you can register there, it has the links and information. And, you know, uh, even though it, as an admin, it's open for other people to post things about UConn uh, and UConn related, I do that. So I, I would just get involved with the UConn Foundation events, get to meet people and you can volunteer for different activities. You know, Harold, you and I, you, the, the UConn Alumni Relations does a lot of various events. We have a flagship event that we do here that we didn't do this summer where we go to the uh, Norwalk uh, Seaport Association where we take the boat out to the Norwalk Islands. There's a clam bake out there. Uh, we do, there's certain events that we do. But I, I would just say, like Brian mentioned, you, there's the alumni, that website, that Husky Hub and the Facebook page and you get on the email distribution list and you should be well informed. And that Sheffield Island, unfortunately, we didn't do it this year, but that Sheffield Island trip yeah. has been a phenomenal trip year after year. I mean, uh, we take a boat out to the island, we get a clam bake and uh, seafood and all the kind of food you want to have. It's a real, it, I don't think we've had, I'll knock on wood on this, one bad day of weather. I mean, it's been absolutely gorgeous yeah. every single time yeah. that we've done that. So strongly, strongly suggest that, that you do that. So yeah, the Fairfield County Facebook page. If you want to get your name uh, and address on the email list, if you don't have that, uh, please let us know uh, and we'll try to make that happen for you so that you're getting information about these events and you could uh, sign up for the ones that, uh, that you like. Obviously, for the last six, five, six months, a lot of these events have been Zoom events, have been virtual events, and uh, we, we hear some positives about that because um, you know, it's easier for people to just go into their room and see what's going on instead of having to, to drive someplace to, to go to an event. But we're hoping that these events will open up sometime in the, in the near future. Okay, uh, I'm gonna ask this for all of the panelists. Now, by the way, there's gonna be a happy hour immediately following this. We're, we're down to our last one or two questions. Uh, and if you have not uh, seen the link yet, please go into the chat room and get the link. Also, you might have noticed Kristen has posted a link to the YouTube uh web uh, tonight's webinar will be on youtube so you could uh you could see that as well and you could save that uh, to watch that at a future time if you need to two final questions the first one is if there was one tip or piece of advice you wish you knew before you moved here to fairfield county what would it be brian you get to go first I think for me, it would have been the Facebook group. Um, I didn't realize there was a Facebook group until we were meeting to kind of plan this out. Um, and I think I spent most of the time like, wait, what's the link? Wait, how do I get into this? I think I was like, Rich, accept me in now. Like I, I was really focused on that Facebook group. So I'm super excited to be part of that. Um, and I, that was kind of what I wish I knew before all of this. Tiffany. Um, I would say if you're new to this area and you have hobbies, explore them. Chances are you're gonna find a group or a group of people that have the same interests as you and then that's another way you can network with people in the area and tiffany mentioned this earlier but there is a page on the facebook page it has uh some of the hobbies if you want to be doing bicycling or ski club uh runners uh some of that thing some of that is on there and rich has been updating that on a regular basis so i'd strongly suggest you do that richard what's the one tip or piece of advice you would give well i've been here a long time so I'm saying it a little bit jokingly, traffic. Traffic is, is bad here. It's not a reason not to move here, but take traffic into consideration. If you have a time to be somewhere and you're driving and you're on 95, or even if you're on Route 15, the Merritt Parkway, just make sure you leave ample time for traffic. And it's traffic. It used to be when I first moved out here, it was like during that rush hour. It just seems like every hour of the day is rush hour now on 95. So 
just take that into consideration. But more importantly, what, what those guys mentioned, you know, Facebook page being involved with the alumni uh, association. Mike. Well, Harold, uh, I moved here when I was seven. I didn't have a choice in the matter. I don't remember. I don't remember what I knew back then. <laughs> so, I'll just say that um, the city of Stanford actually has a pretty good website. Uh, it's got a lot of information. I would encourage anybody who's recently moved here or planning to move here is to go on it and just look around. Uh, there might be some volunteering opportunities, just things to to you know um, do with other people. Also, join Meetup, meetup.com, if you're not aware of that organization. It's a, it's a group where people get together for common events, and there are a lot of Stanford-based uh, Meetup groups. And also, uh, check out uh, Facebook events. I know we've talked about the Facebook UConn page, but check out events. There's a, there's a lot of things, not only in Stanford, but outside in Fairfield County, there's a lot of things going on that might be helpful. A lot of music events and other type of social events. I, I, those are all great suggestions. And, uh, and I would also strongly suggest that you stay in touch with UConn through the Fairfield County chapter. Uh, keep the networking up through the UConn people. It's, they're, we're fun people to socialize with, at least most of the time. Uh, and it would, uh, it would definitely uh, behoove you to find out what things are going on. I know there's been a lot of networking. We've had, uh, we have networking uh, sessions. We have educational sessions. Uh, where uh, people are with, um, with other UConn alumni. I know we had a coaches event uh, a couple years ago where you could meet uh, Gino and you could meet uh, uh, Hurley and all those other fun coaches. And, uh, and so you want to stay involved. And, and I know Fairfield County is probably a little bit far enough away from the store's campus that you, know, you might not be driving up there for a game on a regular basis, but uh, keeping involved with uh, the sporting events that we have um, some of the watches that we have in Stanford and Norwalk is also a good thing to do. So I think we're done with uh, the formal part of our, of our session. Uh, we're going to go to the happy hour pretty soon. Joe, do you want to take us there? Sure. Thank you all panelists. You did a great job giving a, a, a really good idea about how to make your way around Fairfield County and what works and what doesn't. I look forward to all of us continuing this conversation in the happy hour in a much more informal way. So make sure that you copy the link that we have in the chat. We also have a few other links in the chat as, as we talked about. We have the link to the Facebook group. We have a link to uh, the alumni relations event page. And we have a link to how to update your address in our alumni database so that you get all these email invites. It's important for us to have your Fairfield County mailing address because that's how we pull the email lists for events in that area. So make sure that you keep us posted when you move so that we can make keep these great events coming your way and in your mailbox. So for now, copy all these links and we'll see you in about a minute in our happy hour. How does that sound, people? All good? All righty, then we will see you guys soon.